Good evening and welcome to the April 19, 2011 meeting of the Glendale City Council. Can we have a roll call, please? Council members Manukin. Here. Jarian. Here. Quintero. Here. Weaver. Here. Mayor Friedman. Here. Um, I would ask Mayor, uh, Mr. Najarian to lead us in the flag salute tonight. Thank you. <laughs> please rise, place your right hand over your heart, and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the deliverance of this evening's invocation. This week marks a few very important dates that are observed in the month of April. For the first time ever, the Day of Observance of the Armenian Genocide, April 24th, coincides with the celebration of Easter. As the Armenian community remembers the souls who were lost during the terrible tragedy and calls upon the Turkish authorities to make amends for their crimes, many others in our community will be celebrating Easter and Passover and marking the importance of resurrection and new beginnings. We also mark Earth Day, which should remind everyone that regardless of where we live, how much we earn, or what ethnicity we happen to be, we're all members of the same race, the human race, and we occupy one home, our precious planet Earth. So as we can see, there are many reasons to remember, reflect, and rejoice in the coming week. Let us remember the importance of family, friends, and community as we mark these important days. So as we pray for justice and peace, let us also pray for our city's continued prosperity and give thanks for the place we call home, Glendale. We pray that it continues to thrive and give opportunities to everyone who seeks them, we pray for the new council. May they deliberate with wisdom and compassion today and always. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. What is next, please? Next under presentation, uh, next is a, a, a report of the clerk with the agenda for the April 19, 2011 regular meeting of the Glendale City Council. It was posted on Thursday, April 14, 2011 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. And next under presentation and appointments at 3A is the agenda preview for the meetings of April 26, 2011. Okay. Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, for Monday, actually, uh, April 25th at 9 a.m., we do have a uh, study session, a special meeting, Director of Administrative Services, a uh, budget study session again, Monday, April 25th at 9 a.m. Uh, for Tuesday, April 26th, uh, we do have under the Glendale Housing Authority one business agenda item, Director of Community Development. This is regarding consideration of developer and project selection monitoring criteria and prioritization of current affordable housing opportunities. Uh, for the Redevelopment Agency, we have no business agenda items. For the Glendale City Council meeting at 6 p.m., we have a number of consent items. General Manager of GWP, this is an amendment to service authorization agreement with CSG uh, Systems. General Manager of GWP, this is regarding SB1 solar program. General Manager of GWP, research efforts not previously approved under Phase 3A of the Chromium 6 demonstration treatment research facilities. This is a grant application. Fire Chief, uh, Los Angeles Regional Interoperable Communication Systems. Director of Public Works, this is regarding Landfill Consulting Services Agreement. Under Adoption of Ordinances, we have one item, Ordinance Amending the Glendale Building and Safety Code 2011 relating to green building standards. And one item under Action Items, City Attorney, regarding amendments to the Ethics Ordinance. That concludes my report, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And our next order of business? A 3B is a proclamation designating April 2011 as DMV Donate Life California Month. And I'm going to read the proclamation, which says, Whereas more than 100,000 individuals nationwide and more than 20,000 in California are currently on the National Organ Transplant Waiting List, and every 90 minutes one person dies while waiting due to the shortage of donated organs, whereas a single individual's donation of the heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, pancreas, and small intestine can save up to eight lives, donation of tissue can save and heal the lives of up to 50 others, and a single blood donation can help three people in need. And whereas millions of lives each year are saved and healed by donors of organs, tissues, marrow, and blood, and whereas nearly 8 million Californians have signed up with the state-authorized Donate Life California Registry to ensure their wishes to be organ and tissue donors 
are honored, and whereas California residents can sign up with the Donate Life California Registry when applying for or renewing their driver's licenses or ID cards at the California Department of Motor Vehicles. Therefore, I, Laura Friedman, Mayor of the City of Glendale, hereby proclaim the month of April 2011 as DMV Donate Life California Month. And I believe that Monica O'Brien is going to be accepting this proclamation. And Mr. Manukian, would you like to present this? You'd like to say a few words? Yes, thank you. Mayor Friedman and the Glendale City Council, thank you for honoring DMV Donate Life Tissue and Organ Donation Month as a transplant patient. It means a lot to me <coughs> and to the 21,000 Californians who are um, out of the list every year and to the you know 13 people every day that are di dying waiting for these transplants. I would also like to invite you to join us on April 30th uh, down at Cal State Fullerton. We are having a Donate Life Run Walk. It's a 5K run or a 1K walk. Uh, for those of you that would like to enjoy the day a little bit more, it's a huge family festival, rock climbing, uh, food is involved, all kinds of giveaways, raffles, um, and it's from 7 to 11 a.m. down at Cal State Fullerton. Again, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much. And next, I believe we have a very special group of students from Rosemont. At 3C um, is a commendation to the Rosemont Middle School LA Marathon Runners. And is there someone who can explain to everybody, okay, we have someone coming up. Because I read what, these, what this group of students did, and it's pretty inspirational. Mayor Friedman, thank you. Council members, thank you for having us here. We're uh, really glad to be here. I am but one of 20 parents who uh, bring these kids to the... Uh, to the uh, council today. What they did was was nothing short of miraculous. They started in September. You could state your name for Oh, I'm sorry. I thought everybody knew me. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. I'm Rick Middleton, and uh, my daughter's on the team as well. Um, I'm here representing the students of uh, Students Run Los Angeles, which was sponsored by Nike, and uh, their accomplishment for running the marathon. They started in September. Uh, they were running uh, three to four uh, miles three days a week, plus their regular running day for uh, PE. So they were running four days a week, and then they would get up at 6.30 in the morning on Saturdays and go to the Rose Bowl and crank out a couple of laps around the Rose Bowl. All in all, they ran nearly 1,000 miles in preparation for their March uh, 20th run of the LA Marathon, which, by the way, if you don't remember that day, was the worst weather conditions on record for the 26 LA Marathons. Um, they all made it within five hours and 23 minutes. They all finished, and um, we just could not be more proud of them. There are two people that need to be specially recognized, and those are the two uh, non-compensated uh, faculty and staff advisors who mentored them through this whole process, and that's Stephanie Satorian, who's a biology teacher at Rosemont, and Odette Haparian, who is a, um, a secretary at the uh, school. They both also ran. They didn't fare quite so well at the five-hour mark, but um, <laughs> they finished, which was an accomplishment all in itself. So we'd like to thank you for having us here. Um, if I could, can I introduce the students? Absolutely. Um, we have uh, Ninel, and I cannot remember Ninel's last name. I'm sorry. Come on, Ninel. Up here. Help me out. It's Nail Stepanians. There you go. Um, next we have uh, Mark Matthew and Sean McDonald, Sean Cutler. Of course, he's going to stand up and get his dues. <laughs> Anise Ricci, who's standing up. <laughs> See? Uh, Catherine Nolte, Yvette Hartan, and my pride and joy, McKenna Middleton. <laughs> And all of these students are just to be um, commended for what they've done. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I'm going to um, ask Councilmember Najarian and Quintero to help me hand out these uh, proclamations. May I ask who had the fastest time? I'm sorry? Who had the fastest time? Uh, that's a ringer question. That would be my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> Middleton. I'm up here. Both of you. 
Come on up here. Hey, Mayor. Madam Mayor. Arif. Frank. 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 Uh, Frank. I lost him. Uh, you need a whistle? Picture. Turn around. Good. That's good. <laughs> More than one way is going to catch. Photo op. Make sure you can see the photographer. <laughs> Is the mic in the way? Yeah. Oh, that's the guy stood up. Wait up. Wait, wait, everybody. Okay, it's open All right, now. Done deal. Thank you so much. Yep. Before everyone packs up, I would like to recognize the wonderful, simply wonderful principal of Rosemont Middle School, Dr. Oh, Cynthia Livingston, who is in here to share the joy. And, and for, uh, I guess, proper disclosure, my son Christopher happens to be an eighth grader at Rosemont Middle School, but that had nothing to do with my admiration for Dr. Livingston. <laughs> Thanks. We're all very proud of you. Thanks for coming. Okay, next order of business, please. Next uh, on the agenda is City Council and staff comments. Mr. Mnookin. I uh, just want to uh, inform the public that I uh, requested to be put on the agenda today uh, the discussions of uh, having the labor negotiations be public. I just want to let the community know that that's been uh, requested. Thank you. Comments? Comments? I have a few comments. First, um, now that it's all said and done, I want to congratulate our city clerk, Artie Kasakian, and his staff for a very finely run election process, and all of the city staff who worked so hard on the election. Um, it appeared to go very smoothly. Um, secondly, just one event I went to uh, that I wanted to acknowledge. I attended the ANC, the Armenian National Committee's um, I believe it was their sixth annual blood drive to commemorate the Armenian genocide. And I thought that it was such a wonderful way to commemorate a horrible tragedy by giving life. And it's very fitting, too, that we just declared this month to be Blood and Organ Donor Month. Um, but I went and I, I gave blood, and I'm happy to say that they surpassed, they set a record for blood donors for, their, for this event. I believe they had over 70 people, and they expected maybe 35 or 40. So it was very successful. When I was there, people were actually lined up to give blood. And as I heard today on the proclamation, that every, every time you donate blood, you could save three lives. So I want to congratulate them on, on their service for the community. And then lastly, I would like to initiate a new policy, at least for my term in office, which is that many of us, um, if not all of us up here on the dais, don't just serve on the Glendale City Council, but as part of our job as council members, we also serve on regional boards and commissions. And what I would like is for us to make it a policy that after each meeting, we report back to the community on at least the headlines of what was discussed at our various meetings and whether we took any votes, that sort of thing. Anything that we think would be of interest to the community so that they know what's happening in terms of regional planning and regional issues and our role in that as, as Glendale representatives. And I know three of you are on the airport commission, so I don't expect three separate reports about the same meeting, but if you can figure out one of you at least after each meeting to give, even if it's just bullet points about what was discussed, I think it would be very interesting uh, to the community to hear that. Mr. Najarian. I'm sorry, you, you did remind me. I did have uh, an announcement to make, and it, uh, it is in regard to uh, the blood drive that you were a part of. And that is the City of Glendale's uh, annual Armenian Genocide Commemoration. Uh, it's up on the screen, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It will be held on Monday, April 25th, uh, because the 24th uh, falls on Easter Sunday. It will be held at 6.30 p.m. at the Alex Theater. Doors will open at 5.30. We have a keynote speaker, Pulitzer Prize, three-time Pulitzer Prize winner from the Boston Globe, Steve Kirkchen. We have the Glendale uh, Symphony. We have the, um, well, let's see, wrong, it's the Glendale Philharmonic, Glendale I'm sorry, Philharmonic. Glendale Philharmonic, 
and we have a dance group, we have uh, dramatic arts uh, presentations. Tickets are free, and the tickets are obtainable, however, at the Alex Theater box office, and they are open uh, every day from noon to 5 p.m. Uh, just walk up, say you'd like some tickets, and you can get it. It will be a very uh, great and moving event uh, this year. The, uh, this happens to be the 10th year of this, and the committee has been working very hard to make it a successful program. So please come out Monday, uh, 6.30, to the Alex Theater for the Armenian Genocide Commemoration event. And one last uh, announcement. With the permission of my colleagues, I would like to adjourn tonight's meeting in the memory of Carolyn B. Stetler, a longtime resident of Glendale who was a teacher and program supervisor for the Glendale Unified School District for over 25 years. Uh, Ms. Stetler was born in Salt Lake City, Utah on March 26, 1936, and passed away on April 16, 2011, at the age of 75. She was active in the community and a member of the Seroptimus International of Glendale for 20 years. She also gave generously of her time and talent to the Assistance League of Glendale, and she especially enjoyed working in the Assistant League's thrift shop. She loved art, classical music, and playing bridge with her many friends. She will be remembered for her love of life, her sense of humor, and the joy and love she gave to her family and friends. She survived by her longtime companion, Oli Young, her two sons, Fritz and Kelly, and three grandchildren, Amanda, Samantha, and Ryan Stetler. A celebration of her life is being planned. Thank you. What is next on the agenda? Next is consent items, including minutes following a routine and may be acted upon by one motion. A member of council or the audience requesting separate <coughs> consideration may do so by making such requests before motions are proposed. No cards were submitted to remove any of the items from the consent calendar. I'll move the consent calendar. Second. Okay. Mr. Manukian. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Minnie. I did have some questions. If we can pull item E, D, and E, I would appreciate it. Item D and E. Okay, <coughs> and you will need to abstain, I believe, from the minutes. I will abstain from the minutes. Okay, and with that, can we have a motion for the remainder of the consent calendar? Do the makers of the motion uh, acknowledge to have the two items pulled? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Manukian? Yes. Jarnes? With the abstentions. Yes. Montero? Yes. Beaver? Aye. Mayor Friedman? Yes. Item D is Director of Public Works and General Manager of Glendale Water and Power regarding purchase of backup trailer mounted drinking water transfer pump. At D1 is a resolution dispensing with competitive bidding and awarding a contract to Griffin D. Watering Corp. for a backup water pump. At D2 is a resolution appropriating $100,000 to provide funds for a purchase of the backup water pump. At Thank e Oops, sorry, go ahead. And I can read item E, but I'll stop there. I'll okay. okay. Do we have a member of staff who can come and answer any questions? I'm available to answer any questions. Okay. Um, and I would ask my colleagues to be patient with me since uh, I'm trying to get my feet wet and, uh, well, I'm trying to catch up with uh, a lot of these informations, a lot of this information. Uh, we are dispensing with competitive bidding. Why are we dispensing with competitive bidding again? This item was on appropriated in the previous year budget and did not get any responses. So this time we've actually seeked out a vendor that would provide us with our needs. Okay. Uh, and uh, what was, was it budgeted at 100000 or less? We're, we're requesting the funding because it is not appropriated in this year's budget. And what happened, what happened to the budget? If it was appropriate in the prior year, what happened to the funding from prior The from item the prior was not year? carried over into this fiscal year. Therefore, we're required to reappropriate it. Okay. If I can add, the money then reverted back to the fund balance. This is uh, in the water fund, so it stayed in the fund. Okay. And what is the purpose of the water transfer pump? If one of our um, – it's, it's to transfer drinking water in the event of an emergency. I'm sorry, I'm getting into GWP territory right now. Um, but if a pump station fails, this can um, transfer the drinking water. So we don't have any uh, backup uh, transfers for any of our... Uh... We had an item that we currently disposed of because it didn't meet the new requirements for emissions. It was, um, there was zero salvage value, so okay. we discarded it. Okay. Essentially, a replacement pump. Yes, to, it is. To replace the one that we had to dispose of. The previous one was dated. And we've back been operating with that one for over a year. Is that correct? 
Well, we haven't needed one in over a year. Okay. Do we need one now? Yes. In the event yeah, of an emergency, we need to be prepared. Yeah. There are no emergencies now, though. No. Okay. Not currently. Okay. Thankfully. All right. Thank you. Okay. Why don't we take the next item before we um, before we ask for votes? They are separate. I would recommend yeah. you take a vote on this item. Oh, you, well, you, you would. Okay. Then do we have a motion? It's D one and two. I'll move D one and two. Five D one and two. Second. Okay. Can we have a roll call? Certainly. Council members Manukian. Yes. Njarian. Yes. Montero. Yes. Weaver. Aye. Mayor Friedman. Yes. Next item. Five is Director of Community Services and Parks regarding contract amendment to RJM Design Group, Inc. for the Pacific Pool Project at E1's motion amending contract with RJM for additional construction services, $48,700, FF&E, Design and Procurement Services at $146,729, and Plaza Greening Master Planning Services at $10,975 for a total amount of $206,404. And thank you. Uh, are these change orders for the project? Uh, Mayor Friedman, Councilmember Manukian, uh, these are not really change orders. Uh, um, they come as a, as a change. It's additional um, funding for um, construction administration, uh, largely related to the photovoltaic design that was added at at the uh, at the last. Um, approval of the project. So it's, it's for increasing work for, for that design and review. Um, as you know, the pool's on a fast track project schedule, so it, it pays for that as well. Um, and then the FF&E is not a change order. It simply wasn't appropriated. And that's, you know, how, how is the table. pool project coming? Is it uh, within we are, budget? We are right on schedule and within budget. Thank you very much. I'll move uh, 5E. Second. One. Okay, roll call, please. Council members Manukian? Yes. Jarian? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Friedman? Yes. Uh, yes. Next item, please. Next item would be oral communications. It's up to your discretion as to how you would like to handle this portion. I will keep the same policy that Mr. Najarian had in place last year. So at this point, we will take the three minute announcement uh, portion of oral communications. Thank you, Mayor Friedman. I have uh, two cards, um, Paula Devine and Susan Hunt, followed by Leon Mayer. If there's anyone else who would like to speak during this three-minute portion of oral communications, please turn in your cards now. We can give just a moment for them to clear the room if you like. See, Cynthia. Good job. Okay. We know Rick. <laughs> it's always nice. Okay. Good evening, City Council, Mayor Friedman, and staff. My name is Paula Devine, and I'm here on behalf of the Commission on the Status of Women with my fellow Commissioner Susan Hunt. Uh, tonight, we'd like to uh, give you some information on upcoming events. But before we do that, before Commissioner Hunt speaks, I would like um, to congratulate. Councilman Weaver and Councilman Manukian, welcome back on your recent uh, victories in our election. I also want to congratulate our new mayor, Laura Friedman. Last night, Mayor Friedman, in speaking uh, on your new position, you said, I hope I can help to show women and girls that there is a place for them in leadership roles. Well, I just want to let you know that through your example, you have set by first becoming a board member on design review, then a city council member, and now mayor of this city, uh, you certainly have proven that there is a place for girls and women in leadership roles. Your success has added great credibility, reality, and importance to the mission of the Commission on the Status of Women, which is to educate, elevate, and empower women in our community. As a woman, as, a, as your appointee on this commission and as a friend, I am very proud of you. And I thank you and the commission thanks you for taking on this role of leadership. And now I'd like to present Commissioner Hunt. And I ditto all of those things that she just said. Um, April is an awareness month about violence against women. So we've been busy this month already. We have a couple more activities coming. There's a self-defense class at Glendale Community College this Thursday at 5.30. It's free. 
but we would like to know if you're coming. So if you're coming, you need to contact the city manager's office. Um, college women are four times more likely to be sexually assaulted than the general population. So it's particularly important, and our student associate uh, on the commission really wanted to have this session at Glendale College, and we're glad she was able to set it up. On the following Thursday, the 27th, I believe that is, or is it the 28th? 28th. 28th, is Take Back the Night. We've been doing this for a number of years in conjunction with the YWCA of Glendale. This time, instead of starting at Parcher Plaza, we're starting across the street at the Glendale Police Department. And there will be some talking there and speech making. And then we're all going to walk down Isabel to Broadway and go across Broadway and up Glendale to the YWCA, where there will be the um, Clothesline Project. And many of you have participated with us before at the Clothesline Project. This is. Uh, clothing that has been um, um, memorialized with thoughts and images like don't hit mommy anymore or no means no, those kinds of things. It's very powerful. There will be some more conversation there about these issues. Was that me? That's Did you, but you can just finish up. What I'll finish up. Oh, it was the beep. I'm sorry. And then on May 5 comes the Jewels of Glendale luncheon celebrating our five uh, jewels, Mona Marcos, Lynn Raggio, Tannis Rines, Blanca Zavala, and our GEM Scholarship Award to Ani Gazikanyan, and uh, the Chair's Special Recognition Award to Lana Haddad. We hope to see all of you there at the Oakmont on May 5th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Leon Mayer. Good evening, Mayor. Mayor Friedman, members of the council and staff, my name is Leon Mayer. I'm here on behalf of the Friends of the Library and the Library, and we have two announcements to make. This Thursday, as I've already told you, we're going to have Dr. Arthur Bartner, who will talk about the, uh, on the ladder, 40 years as the uh, director of the SC uh, Marching Band the Spirit and the Spirit of Troy. And... He will be there, 7 o'clock, parking is available at the structure on Maryland, three-hour validation for all our events. Now, the particular event we're doing this Thursday, uh, if I could have everybody sworn to secrecy. <laughs> uh, everybody who has ever watched a football game or watched the SC marching band has seen Traveler, the horse. And the owner of Traveler is a member of the Kiwanis Club. Her name is Joanne Asman. And she ordinarily charges $1,600 for Traveler to make appearances, special appearances. And she is going to have Traveler there Thursday night between 15 and 7. Bring your kids, bring your grandchildren, take pictures. And she's done this as a courtesy to the city of Glendale and to the friends of the library. So we're looking forward to everybody coming out, seeing Traveler, meeting Dr. Bartner, look, talking about his book, buying his book. He'll, he'll show some slides too. So it should be a great event, and we're looking forward to everybody coming. But don't tell anybody who might tell Dr. Bartner, because uh, Joanne Osmond Asman is a very close friend of Dr. Bartner. She's doing this as a special treat for him. Now, we very quickly on May 4th, we're having Lisa Napoli come to the library to talk about the kingdom of what I learned in Bhutan, the happiest kingdom on earth. Uh, and the, it's Radio Shangri La. And she went to, Shang I started to say Shangri-La, she went to Bhutan twice uh, in the last couple of years. She spent time there with the, the high school kids, their high school kids, uh, helping them with their radio station. And uh, she came back and then wrote a book about it, and it's a great book. And for those of you who don't remember, uh, her Lost Horizon was at Bhutan. Except at that time, they didn't call it Bhutan. It was a little area in the Himalayas, north of India, west of Pakistan, east of uh, Bangladesh, and south of China. And she's going to talk about her book. I have these flyers. And she's a radio, well-known radio uh, personality on uh, PBS radio. So 
that's another great event we're going to have, and that's May 4th at 7 o'clock. Thank you very much. Now, ask me for flyers as I leave. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Mayor. Next item, please. Next item, moving to uh, the adoption of ordinances at item 778 is an ordinance granting of a franchise to Pacific Pipeline Systems LLC for the operation and maintenance of an oil pipeline, line 63. This was offered by Council Member Dave Weaver on April 12, 2011. I'll move 7A. Second. Hey, roll call. Question. Council Members Mnookin. Wait up. Yes. I, uh, I was not here during the deliberations for this ordinance, so I will, I will now vote on it. This thing keeps beeping. I will figure out one of these <laughs> times why, but I'll... But I'll take care of it. You're receiving uh, your calendar notices for budget. Uh, I know, and there's so many that keeps beeping. I keep I declining all of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just curious regarding this ordinance. Is the city uh, receiving any funds for it? Yes. There? No. Yes, it's, it's, it's actually it. an existing pipeline. The franchise is being renewed. But yes, okay. we do receive uh, per foot. Per, I don't know the exact cost of the sand. 15000 uh, it's a month? Annual. Year. Annually? Annually, yeah. It's pursuant Oil to state pipeline, 15000 a month? It's pursuant to state uh, law. A year? Oh, really? I still have to have to abstain from the vote. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second? Yes, we, we do. Call. Council members, who can? Abstain. Uh, Najarian? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Friedman? Yes. Next, please. Moving on to action items. At 8A is Director of Public Works regarding safe and healthy streets plan. At 8A1 is a motion adopting the plan. Okay, Mr. Bogart. Mayor Friedman, Council Members, City Staff, good evening. My name is Colin Bogart. I work for the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition. I've been working here with the City of Glendale for about two and a half years. And I'm here to uh, talk to you about the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan tonight. Um, I do have some slides to show you along with my presentation. So if I may, I'd like to ask you uh, your attention to the screen over here. To start, I'd like to give a brief overview of the Safe, Safe and Healthy Streets Place Grant project. As you know, uh, this project has been a collaboration of the City of Glendale and the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition thanks to a grant from the LA County Department of Public Health. As part of the project, we formed what we like to call the Safe and Healthy Streets Team. The Safe and Healthy Streets Team consists of staff members from four city departments. These departments include the Community, and Service, Community Services and Parks Department, Community Development, the Police Department, and Public Works, including the Engineering and the Traffic and Transportation Divisions. There are two main goals for the uh, Safe and he Healthy Streets project. The first is to create a policy document. In this case, it is the Safe and Healthy Streets plan that we're discussing tonight. Our second goal is to implement what we're calling a physical project. For us, that's the Riverdale Maple Glendale Greenway, which you heard about last week and approved as part of an act uh, uh, consent items. For over two and a half years, or for over two years now, we've been working on this project and we've been doing extensive community outreach. Part of this community outreach included a series of five community meetings that we held in the fall of 2009 in which we asked people to tell us about their experiences walking or biking in Glendale, good or bad, and we told them that we were going to use the information that we collected to help us draft the Safe and Healthy Streets plan. We did that, and then in the fall of 2010, we held another series of community meetings in which we asked uh, Glendale residents and community members to give us feedback on that draft plan. We collected information at those meetings. We also collected information from the community through email and the internet, and also through personal meetings with community members. We also turned to staff for feedback on the draft Safe and Healthy Streets plan. We gave copies of the plan to all of the departments that are participating in the project, and we asked them to give us their feedback, which we collected through January of this year. Following that, we presented our draft plan to three of the city's commissions, the Transportation and Parking Commission, the Planning Commission, and the Parks and Recreation Commission. All three commissions voted unanimously to support the Safe and Healthy Streets plan. So what is the Safe and Healthy Streets plan? It's a big picture document. It contains broad policies and programs that are intended to guide and support walking and biking in Glendale. 
The Safe and Healthy Streets Plan also supports and complements existing city plans already in place. These include the Bikeway Master Plan, which is currently being revised. It includes Safe Routes to School, which is also underway, is also grant-driven, and has been applied to 12 schools so far. And it also complements the Downtown Mobility Study, of which you know the implementation is also currently in progress. So the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan doesn't necessarily address the details, such as where do the bike lanes go, where do the crosswalks go, what signs do we put where. It's more of the big picture items um, that we have tried to address in the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan to su support what's already in place here at the City of Glendale and then go beyond. The plan is organized into what are called the five E's, and the idea behind the five E's is that it is important to implement all five of these for the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan to be successful. Number one is education. An example of this would be policy 2.1B to establish a ped and bicycle education programs through the Parks Department. Number two would be encouragement. An example would be policy 3.1A to establish city organized walks and rides. Number three is enforcement. An example would be policy 4.1G to establish distribution programs for bike and bike and bike lights and helmets in lieu of issuing citations. Number four is engineering. An example would be policy 5.3 to adopt a complete streets policy in which streets are designed or rebuilt to accommodate all users. And finally, five is evaluation. An example would be policy 6.4A to conduct regular pedestrian and bicyclist counts in September, of which we have already done two as part of the Safe and Healthy Streets project. And I can't resist, this photo is my favorite photo from the 2009 bike and ped count. These are two volunteers at the corner of Mountain and Verdugo. Uh, first of all, you can note the gas price is $3.49 a gallon. Uh, but what I also really like about this is that the human fuel uh, although it's not the healthiest, the soda pop is only 99 cents a liter. There are additional chapters in the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan, including resources and staffing. An example in this would be policy 7.2A to establish a pedestrian and bicyclist advisory committee. We also included a chapter for funding sources. We recognize that funding will be necessary to implement a lot of the policies we're recommending in the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan. So we included a selected list of potential sources into the document. It's not necessarily a comprehensive list, but we felt it was important to include at least a selected list. And finally, there's an action plan chapter in the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan. The idea behind this is we've, we've included a timeline for implementation of the policies in that plan. And those policies are grouped into categories such as in progress, short term, medium term, and long term. And that concludes my brief presentation to you this evening. I do want to stress that this has truly been a collaborative project. In addition to the city departments that I've already mentioned, we've received nothing but we've received support from virtually every department here in the city of Glendale. Uh, more speci uh, specifically, I would like to thank the library department, which has been super supportive of, of us and has offered the uh, auditorium at the Central Library on numerous occasions. Uh, we've also received a lot of support from GTV6. I also want to say that we've received a lot of community support for this project. Uh, that has been in the form of uh, organizations in Glendale, such as the Downtown Glendale Merchants Association, who've been very supportive, and then countless volunteers who have helped us with this project, many of which are actually here this evening to uh, witness this meeting. And with that, I would be happy to answer any questions if you have them. Okay, questions. We'll hold comments until after the public speaks, but if there are any questions from the dais, Mr. Mnookin. Yes, uh, the enforcement section of uh, your presentation, what does it entail? Because I remember uh, when, I was, when I was approximately 17 years old, yes, I do remember that far, uh, I, when I left high school, it was Van Nuys High School, and I made a right, a police officer stopped me and gave me a ticket for making a right without stopping at the stop sign, which was fine. Uh, but is that what you mean by enforcement? Uh, I, I hope not, because... You mean on your bike? On my bike, yeah. Can, can you imagine a police officer on a motorcycle stopping you? You're out of high school and giving a 17-year-old ticket on the bike instead of saying, listen, you know, you should... That was a stop sign you missed, by the way. You should obey the, mm -hmm. the laws of, uh, of traffic. 
The enforcement chapter of the of the plan includes a number of policies, um, some of which are, are programs such as the uh, helmet and light distribution program that I mentioned in which instead of giving somebody a ticket for not having, uh, instead of giving children tickets for not wearing a helmet because you are required if you're under 18 to wear a helmet in the state of California, uh, you're also required to have a front headlight on your bike if you're riding after dark. Um, and the idea behind that policy was that instead of issuing citations, we want to reinforce proper behavior, the correct behavior. So uh, the policy that we put in there is to uh, try to initiate distribution programs for lights and helmets so that instead of issuing a citation, they could give someone a helmet or give someone a light. Um, the LA County Bike Coalition has spoken to some industry connections who've said that they'd be willing to donate lights potentially for such a project in the future. Um, so th that's just one example. There's a number of policies, and I don't know if you want me to go through them all. No, that's just an example. And it's, it, it's basically in terms of the, the approach to the community. It's not, a, uh, it's not an enforcement, but uh, uh, assistance in serving the community, basically. Yeah. Yes. That's what I would expect. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Sure. Any other questions before we go to the yes. public? And I know there's a captain here kind of watching. Okay. He'll probably go back and investigate my ticket when right. I was 17. Yeah, did you pay that fine, Mr. Weaver? Uh, my, parents, my parents did. <laughs> Mr. Weaver. So I'd like to know, is this plan a, a reference document for the circulation element of the general plan? Or, I mean, it talks about the, amending the general plan, but I'm trying to understand this plan seems more like a reference document with data that would be incorporated into the circulation element. Um, I would say that there are components of this that would be a reference document towards the circulation element of the general plan. Um, most likely the sections re that reference engineering or evaluation as they relate to things like um, uh, um, calculating um, I kind of just blanked out on the term for it. I apologize. Different ways of uh, slowing traffic, whatever. There is a section in it that addresses traffic calming, which for example. Which and it would, it would, it would ultimately require a review by the planning department and the transportation and traffic division for any kind of amendment that might be necessary in the circulation element. Maybe I should defer to Mr. Hagani. Um, Madam Mayor and members of the Council, uh, it is a reference document. It's like an action plan uh, as we are updating the general plan and we are actually incorporating the mobility element of the general plan into our community plans. We are referencing this document and piece by piece we will be having those discussions as we have with North Glendale community uh, into and incorporate certain parts of those as, and we will present those as, as recommendations following this action plan. Does it kind of seem like a boilerplate document? that are, is very general, and elements of that I can see it being extracted and utilized, but not General and document. specific, and uh, we will use them, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and let me also, uh, this is maybe a comment, but also a question. I, I was told, and I want to just confirm this, that not having a document like this in place, or not having a policy like this in place, could uh, preclude us receiving some sorts of grant funding. So it's very important that we have an adopted policy about safe and healthy streets in order to go after all of the grant funding that's available for safe and healthy street type programs. Is that correct? I think it's, um, the safe and healthy streets document is actually pretty unusual in terms of, of how it sits with existing city documents and what's required for grant applications. Um, I'm not sure that this document would necessarily be required for some grant applications. I know, for example, the bike master plan that is being revised does have to be updated in order for the city to access bicycle transportation account funds at the state of California. Um, but I would imagine that having a policy such as this in place will uh, be advantageous for the grant uh, application process because they'll see that the city has adopted this and that they're very serious about implementing it. Okay, if there are no more questions, I'm going to go to the public. Um, each member of the public is going to get three minutes to speak. If you want to speak and haven't turned a card in yet, please do so at this time. Okay, um, Ruth Hartley, followed by Gail Haberman. Uh, my name is Booth Hartley. I'm a, a resident of uh, Verdugo Woodlands. I moved into my current house in uh, 1946 and immediately started bicycling after that as a child. I've bicycled my entire life, um, so it's been quite a few years and I've seen a lot of changes in Glendale. 
a number of the changes have not been favorable for cyclists. Um, we used to have a, a bicycle route that went from Spar Heights down Verdugo Boulevard, or Verdugo Road, behind the Civic Plunge and behind the Civic Auditorium to, uh, to Mountain. Um, when the Civic Plunge got taken out, the bicycle route basically was destroyed because they put up barriers to, to cycle the cars through there and the bikes could no longer use it. So that was sad. Then uh, another thing came along, they restriped Kenyatta Boulevard, uh, providing left turn lanes at all the signals. And what this meant was that the right lane of traffic is, is crushed over to the uh, to the curb, uh, leaving no room for bicycles, making it very dangerous to ride on Kenyatta. So a couple of years ago, I was very encouraged after this history that we had to start seeing positive things in Glendale, specifically uh, the Sharrows that I noticed arrived on, on Grandview. Uh, I was riding out Glen Oaks another time, and I found, my gosh, I've got a bike lane where it makes it clear to the drivers that I belong here and that I have a, have a place for me and it's not the same place as, as they need. Um, also, we did these uh, community bike rides, uh, one of which was over to Grand Central Airport, the location that it had been, and I was actually able to speak to the group because uh, I learned how to fly at, at Grand Central. So uh, there's been a lot of, lot of nice things happened to the community. One of the most amazing things that happened was concerning Verdugo Park. They put in some speed bumps that were pretty horrendous. They basically made it impossible to ride your bike through Verdugo Park anymore. I talked to Colin and he touched bases with a few of his uh, contacts in the city and uh, George Chapchian took charge of the effort and had the speed bumps redesigned and rebuilt so that bikes can once again ride through the park as can wheelchairs and people with strollers, so it's, it's basically made our park safer and healthier. I view this plan as a symbol of the city's uh, attempt to make life better for pedestrians and bicycles, make life healthier for everybody here in Glendale, and accordingly I enlist your support. Thank you. Gail Haberman, followed by um Shekri Katan. And I apologize in advance. I'm sure I'm going to butcher at least a few names. Forgive me. Hi, Gail Haberman with the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. In 2008, the County Department of Public Health made this grant for about $300,000 for a three-year period to the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition in partnership with the City of Glendale to develop the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan. Much of the funding was used for community input. Um, the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition, together with city staff, held several community meetings to gather input on the plan and diligently integrated much of the feedback from various stakeholders. Public Health wants to acknowledge the city and its staff for taking the time to develop this plan. Uh, especially, I'd like to acknowledge Kevin Carter, Mike Nelson, Mark Sturdivant, and Steve Zern. And I also want to acknowledge Colin Bogart and the LA County Bicycle Coalition for their hard work on this. Why is public health even funding such a plan? There's substantial evidence that when cities design streets for safe biking and walking, more people will actually forego their cars and get out onto the streets walking and biking. And there's also substantial evidence that crashes are reduced when the streets are designed for safe biking and walking. In addition, substantial health benefits are reaped when someone walks or bikes. If someone will spend 30 minutes a day in moderate exercise, this will drastically reduce their risk of chronic disease. And the good news is this can be this can be done in increments of 10 minutes. So somebody can go 10 minutes to drop their kids off at the school and then 10 minutes to the market and 10 minutes to return a video for a total of 30 minutes reaping immense health benefits. This is important in Glendale. Let me share a few stats with you. I won't bore you too much. But this is one of the reasons why we decided to make the grant was that the stats are important for you all to be aware of. That 17 percent of adults, 18 and older, and 16 percent of children are obese in Glendale. An additional 46 percent of adults and an additional 18 percent of children are overweight. Almost 40 percent of adults in Glendale engage in minimal to no physical activity. 
putting them at great risk of heart disease and other chronic diseases. But people won't automatically walk and bike just because it's good for their health. Currently, about 67% of adults in Glendale drive to do errands less than one mile for their home, from their home. If we create safe bike lanes and walking routes that connect people to key destinations, businesses, schools, transit, recreation areas, we can encourage people to bike and walk to these de destinations rather than taking their car. It's especially important to create biking and walking routes that accommodate people of all ages. I don't want to take more than my time. I'm going to end by saying thank you so much to Glendale and to the community for their participation in developing this policy. Thank you. Shakri Katan, followed by Paul Rabinov. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Shukri Katan, and I'm the senior caseworker at the International Rescue Committee. Uh, we're based here in Glendale. We're a nonprofit organization. And we're responsible for resettling over 1,000 refugees in Los Angeles County, a vast majority of which who reside in the city of Glendale. And I'm here today to voice our support for this plan because recently many of our uh, refugees have been complaining about how difficult it is to move about the city and, um, and also that it's become very expensive. Uh, many of them are actually um, welfare recipients, so they rely on public assistance as a form of income. And for our refugees who need to move about the city, who take multiple buses to transfer to different areas in the city, uh, can't afford the costs anymore. And uh, many of which have actually moved to bicycles. And just to stress, you know, bicycles are not just simply a recreational device. For our refugees, they're actually very important uh, to attend job interviews, to go to work, go to medical appointments, attend school. So we feel uh, this plan uh, it's very important, very timely, and uh, two of the E's, uh, as stated in the proposal, uh, education and encouragement, our agency feels is important for our refugees. Uh, they need this uh, education about bike safety, bike laws, um, especially for the youth who are new to the country and don't know any of the laws in the country and need to know more about how to use their bicycles to get to school. And encouragement as well, because I feel that many of our clients, they feel that they need to purchase a car in order to be more self-sufficient. But of course, that's not an option for many of them who still haven't found any jobs. So we feel that by t showing them a different option, that bicycles is actually a viable means of transportation around the city, uh, this plan would be very helpful for all the refugees in our community who are trying to become more self-sufficient. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Paul Rabinov, followed by Ari Gross. Good evening, uh, Mayor Friedman, council members, and staff. My name is Paul Rabinov. I'm actually a neighbor of Glendale. I live in unincorporated county at Los Angeles in La Crescenta area. Um, despite that, I can give you the neighbor's view, which is that the efforts uh, and uh, intentions of the city of Glendale uh, to make a healthy and safe uh, community for all of us are to be applauded. I've, I've ridden my bike and walked to and from Glendale for recreation, for dining and shopping. Uh, my kids have attended the Glendale Unified School District schools. Uh, they're now at CV High School. Um, and I think this is just a fantastic program to incorporate for the city. I want to say that uh, some of my tenderest memories uh, have been from walking my kids every day, uh, rain and shine, uh, sunshine, uh, to elementary school. And um, uh, witnessing that so many of the parents that live closer than us to school always were driving their kids. If the city can implement this and with the Glendale Unified School District work, hopefully also with the county to make uh, walking to school more safe for the kids, I, I think there's nothing that could be more impactful for that for all of us. Um, as I was driving down here this evening, I, I reflected on something that happened recently. During spring break, I took my family to Spain and we visited Madrid and Barcelona. And looking at those cities from a mobility eye, um, it was very obvious to me that not only do people and their activities influence the infrastructure of a community, but the reverse holds true as well. The infrastructure of a community definitely Im influences people's behavior. And this will do nothing but help with that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Ari Gross, followed by Nathalie Winisarski. Uh, Mayor Friedman, council members, staff, uh, my name is Ari Gross. I'm a um, 
resident of the city of Glendale. I live in the Verdugo Woodlands. And um, I just want to say that I'm thrilled that the council is um, uh, entertaining the uh, adoption of the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan. I moved here about five years ago with my wife. We had a daughter four years ago. And... Um, and, and, and right around the time my daughter was born, I started to become very concerned about the fact that as lovely as our neighborhood is, um, traffic was insane. And we found that it was extremely difficult to, to walk along um, North Verdugo Road, uh, let alone safely um, cycle. Um, we live walking distance from Verdugo Woodlands Elementary School, um, and um, there's always... Uh, uh, a half a mile of traffic in the morning and the afternoon as there is at, at uh, Glendale College. So I, I was thrilled a couple of years ago uh, at the library to see and notice that there were meetings um, that Colin Bogart was putting together to hear from community members about addressing these issues in the city of Glendale. Um, I think the Safe and Healthy Streets plan is um, farsighted and uh, timely and um, I uh, uh, look forward to my daughter uh, being able to enjoy um, this city on foot, um, a as a bicyclist, um, and um, uh, I'm particularly thrilled with the uh, education elements, the uh, enforcement elements, and the, the street calming measures suggested in the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan. And um, I would really like to commend Colin and everybody else who has worked on this project for the past couple of years. And I would urge you to uh, adopt the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan. Thank you. Thank you. Napoli Winiarski, Win Win followed by Steve Messer. Good evening. <laughs> Forgive Mayor me Friedman. for that bungling of the last name. It's okay. It's Napoli Winiarski. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Friedman and City Council members. My name is Natalie Wieniarski, and I've been a Glendale resident since 1969, and I'm an avid cyclist, pedestrian, and a volunteer for Glendale Safe and Healthy Streets. And as a volunteer for the past couple years, I have heard many residents express their interest in uh, bicycle riding, but they are afraid to ride in the streets. So I'm here tonight in support specifically for the establishment of the Pedestrian and Bicyclist Advisory Committee. I believe that this will give structure and support and support the longevity of the Glendale Safe and Healthy Streets Project. This plan affects each and every one of us on many levels and is essential for a thriving, com thriving community. <clears throat> Excuse me. I encourage you to, uh, to adopt this plan, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Steve Messer, followed by Elise Kalfayan. Mayor Friedman, honorable council members, my name is Stephen Messer, and I'm a bicycle commuter, a recreational road rider, and an avid mountain biker. I serve on the board of Corba, a nonprofit representing off road cyclists in Los Angeles and Ventura counties. I also help run a social cycling club with many regular riders in Glendale and the surrounding communities. After participating in the public hearings and volunteering for bike and pedestrian counts over the past two years and generally being involved in this process, I'm very excited to see this plan come before you, the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan. As someone who rides a bicycle through the city of Glendale almost daily, I'm well aware of the challenges that cyclists have faced in the city. I've also seen and taken advantage of the improvements to the city's cycling infrastructure, especially in the last year. A year ago, I couldn't find an easy place to park my bicycle here at City Hall. Tonight, my bike is parked on a nice new bike lock right by the front steps of City Hall. The Safe and Healthy Streets Plan will help guide the city as it continues to improve infrastructure for cyclists, pedestrians, and the community at large. I'm also very pleased to see a comprehensive educational component included in the plan. Part of having safe streets is having safe and confident cyclists. The plan before you includes a recommendation for a bike skills park where cyclists can have fun, healthy and sustainable recreation while at the same time improving their bike handling skills and confidence. 
A bike skills park already appears on the City of Glendale Master Trails Plan as adopted by the City Council in January 2008. The skills gained in off-road cycling make for better, safer cyclists, both on-road and off-road. As streets become safer for cyclists, more mountain bikers will be encouraged to ride their bikes to the Glendale's trails instead of driving, reducing car trips. There's a great deal of crossover between off-road cycling and on-road cycling. Most of the mountain bikers Cobra represents have ridden or will ride the roads and trails in the city of Glendale. We fully support the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan and encourage the City Council to adopt it tonight. I thank Colin Bogart, the City staff, the LACBC and all the public who have collaborated to, de to develop this incredible plan that will help guide us in all into a better future for cyclists, pedestrians and the community. Thank you. Thank you. Elise Kalfayan followed by Carol Fute. Good evening, Mayor Friedman and City Council members and staff. I'm Elise Kalfayan, and I've been very pleased to work with Colin Bogart on the Glendale Safe and Healthy Streets Plan. I strongly support all the elements of this plan. It provides a great framework for building sustainable transportation projects and choices in this city. Colin has assembled this plan methodically and enthusiastically over the past two and a half years. Community members like me have attended many meetings. City staff have worked expertly together to help with all elements of the plan. And school district stakeholders and other community groups and city commissioners and yourselves as city council members have really provided a lot of ideas and feedback. I'm very impressed that this plan doesn't stand alone in Glendale. It is one of many facets reflecting the city's environmental focus. I'm thinking last week of the, um, uh, the Glendale Narrows River Rock project groundbreaking and lots of other great initiatives in this city and I'm very proud of them all. This plan does stand as uh, a great uh, continuation of the sustained work that Glendale is doing to uh, improve pedestrian and bicycling safety and it takes those efforts to a higher level. Uh, I urge you to uh, put this plan into action. Thank you very much. Thank you. Carol Foot, followed by Jennifer Klausner. Hi, my name is Carol Foyt, and I'm a longtime resident of Glendale. And just as a disclaimer, I do also work for the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition, so I think we know where this is headed. But um, I'll leave uh, some of the planner talk to Colin and friends and just say that um, I grew up in Glendale and I've always felt a little bit ambivalent about the city. It's, it's a great city, but there are certain things that we could definitely work on, and one of those is uh, the issue of traffic safety. And in the last couple years, this is really, last couple years, um, I've seen myself grow prouder to be a Glendalian. And I think it all started, you know, seeing that bike lane on Glen Oaks. Like, that was just such a big moment for me, uh, personally. And, like, seeing the Sheryls on Grandview was, like, one of the first times in my life where I could really brag about Glendale, especially to my fellow cyclists, because, you know, we beat the city of L.A., we got our Sheryls down. And um, it's just so refreshing to see the city of Glendale finally prioritize people over cars and you know really take safety issues seriously and so with that um, I would really like to see Glendale keep continuing what it's doing but also take uh, traffic safety to the next level and that's why I'm asking you to please adopt the Glendale safe and healthy streets plan um, yeah I just I want to see more bicyclists out there I want to see more pedestrians out there I want people to feel safe on our streets and um, I don't want Glendale to be known as a city that's known for traffic collisions or like having bad drivers. You know, I want us to be known for, I want my hometown to be a city I can be proud of and a city that's safe, that's healthy, that has a great quality of life and, of course, um, you know, has really good food. So, thank you. <laughs> Jennifer Klausner followed by Scott Lowe. Hi, Jennifer. Mayor Friedman, members of council and city staff. My name is Jennifer Klausner and I'm the executive director at Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition. 
three years ago in the middle of an RFP information session about a grant opportunity from the County Department of Public Health, there was a fire drill and the entire building had to be evacuated. And in the scene that ensued outside the building where everyone was milling around hoping that soon they'd be able to go back in and get additional information about this grant opportunity, one of our board members at the time met Mark Sturdevant from the department which is now known as Community Services and Parks. And it was that meeting that started a dialogue that led to a partnership between LACBC and the city of Glendale where we applied for the PLACE grant. PLACE is Policies for Livable Active Communities and Environments. And it's just like it sounds. The County Department of Public Health is concerned about the increase in obesity and chronic disease. Then they want to encourage healthy, active life lifestyles that they know will stem some of these crises that we're experiencing. Our partnership with Glendale, as Colin mentioned in his presentation, grew to include more than just the Parks Department, but to be a truly interdepartmental collaboration, and one in which city staff across many departments, as well as numerous community groups here in Glendale, were involved. We have worked as a as a partnership to encourage non-motorized transportation as one element of a healthy lifestyle and to enhance the safety of those who walk and bike in Glendale. This has been very meaningful for Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition. It's very much in keeping with our mission and I am so proud of what we have accomplished here in Glendale as a team. The Safe and Healthy Streets Plan is a guideline for carrying this work forward. It's a roadmap, no pun intended, for doing right by Glendale cyclists and pedestrians into the future. And so on behalf of all who walk or ride bikes in the city of Glendale, myself included, I urge you to adopt the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan, and thank you. Thank you. Scott Lowe, followed by Rai Bard. Hello, my name is uh, Scott Lowe. I'm a Glendale resident and cyclist and frequently pedestrian as well. Um, I used to weigh 287 pounds uh, and uh, since then I've, I'm down to about 195. I have pictures of my pre-biking state available upon request, but I don't think I want them to be included in the public record, so I didn't bring them with me today, but I can email them to you if you'd like. Um, and a large part of my weight loss was uh, the fact that I started biking to work. Um, I moved to, it's not that early yet, um, I moved to uh, South Glendale and now I bike uh, every day about a mile and a half uh, north into downtown Glendale for work. And since uh, I started doing that, I've lost nearly 100 pounds. And of course I diet and do other exercise as well. But uh, it's a part of my daily routine. And it's not some weird, strange choice. It's just how I get to work every day. And I think uh, if if we want truly safer streets in Glendale uh, and broader acceptance of cyclists and pedestrians, uh, it needs to be just a mainstream choice, not some sort of reckless, crazy decision that, like, you know, how, how can you bike on Glen Oaks with all that traffic or whatever? It's just not that, you know, once you learn the skills and get going, it's not that big of a deal for me anymore. So, um, again, I strongly encourage the council to adopt the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Scott. Rye Berge, followed by Susan Jacarl. Hi, my name is Rye Berg, and I live up by Montrose. Um, <clears throat> to me, this plan is about livability and creating a sense of place. One of the reasons I moved to Montrose is that the downtown has a lot of traffic calming measures up there. It's a great pedestrian environment. Every time I go down there, there's families out with their kids. There's a farmer's market. Um, just a lot of, it just makes the place feel like some place you want to be out walking around. So that's what this plan is to me. I currently commute from my house to downtown two or three times a week by bicycle. And there are several stretches that are really great. The LA River bike path. I don't have to worry about getting run over. Um, but there are some long stretches in between where I'm fighting with traffic. I'm a little bit worried because the cars are going really fast. A lot of our streets are really wide. Verdugo, Lac uh, Kenyatta Boulevard. Um, and so I would like to see the city take some steps 
in that direction, and I think this, this plan is a really, really great and comprehensive way to do so. So, also, um, in terms of making the streets feel safer, my fiance really wants to start riding, but she just doesn't feel like she has the skills. So I think the education and providing that, those types of skills and encouragement to people can really go a long way. So I'd just like to thank you and really encourage you to adopt the plan tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Susan DeCarl, followed by Bill Weissman. Congratulations, Laura. You're awesome. Um, hey, City Council. Sorry. I, I think it's funny that Rye went before me because uh, we were doing the pedestrian count together, and I had driven there, and he had biked, of course, and then when we went to give Colin our results, he totally beat me by like 10 minutes biking to uh, the place. So, yes, bikes are awesome. Mark Sturdivant is awesome also. And um, so is sa the Safe and Healthy Streets plan. Um, I think it's going to be like a fine setting uh, to add more jewels to our jewel city. And as a mom, uh, I love walking my kids to school to Verdugo Woodlands every day. I help with traffic duty. I see, I don't know how many horrible almost traffic accidents every morning and uh, everything's going by so quickly it's as a mom like my heart is like beating and I'm so scared um, this plan I think will help so much um, and even today when I was walking back to uh, back from school after dropping them off I saw a whole bunch of bicyclists go by and it was so wonderful it was so peaceful and and everything was law-abiding and also um, with all due respect yeah, I, I think enforcement is not a bad word. I know maybe you had a, a something happen when you were 17, but there's a reason for us to have these laws. And it has left a scar in me for the rest of my life. I'm really sorry, but just just don't break the law again. Um, I still ride my bike. And, and yeah, so I am all, and also um, being on the board of the Glendale Parks and Open Space Foundation, I am all for encouragement. That's part of our mission statements to get people out and enjoying the outdoors. So, yes, please go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Wiseman, followed by Stephanie Langrigan. Good evening, Mayor Friedman, City Council members, City staff, and the public. My name is Bill Weissman. I'm currently the chair of the City of Glendale Transportation and Parking Commission, and I'm here tonight to speak in support of the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan. As has been mentioned by several previous speakers, this really was a true collaborative effort, really over, over a period of years, uh, involving you know the leadership of Colin Bogart, uh, the participation of many members of City staff from uh, different departments, uh, participation from the Glendale Police Department, and a wonderful um, degree of participation by our citizens who not only in the meetings but in the bicycle and pedestrian counts and, and activities like planting trees on the Riverdale Maple uh, Corridor. Um, there's just been a huge amount of community participation in this, which in my mind has... Uh, truly validated the, uh, the conclusions uh, that the, uh, the plan uh, talks about. Um, just wanted to briefly mention a couple of things. One of the things, uh, as Colin mentioned, this is kind of a broad policy document, and one of the things it embodies is a complete streets policy, where when we look at uh, uh, revamping streets or uh, building new streets, that it's not only <coughs> the automobiles that we're going to take into a, account, but the needs of pedestrians and bicyclists and seniors and disabled uh, people as well, all the various constituencies that need to be able to use our streets uh, in a safe manner. And I just wanted to briefly mention a couple of uh, things that are going on right now that the public might not be aware of that the city of Glendale is currently involved in. One of them is Assembly Bill 529 from Assemblyman Mike Gatto, which is an effort to uh, redefine for Glendale uh, how speed limits may be calculated and set. Um, my understanding is uh, a version of the bill was passed uh, by the State Legislature Transportation Committee that didn't exactly have everything in it that we wanted, but hopefully is going to result in something uh, that will be useful for us. And we may be able to use this as a, uh, 
a tool to reduce speed limits uh, on some of our streets where it makes sense to do so. And the other thing I wanted to mention very briefly that the city is also currently involved in looking at is the provisions of California Vehicle Code 22358.4, which is the provision that allows cities by resolution under certain circumstances to reduce school speed limits to 15 miles an hour. Um, the reason I am an advocate for, uh, in places where it's appropriate, reducing school speed limits to 15 miles an hour is not so much because we have a speeding problem, but it's a real good way of making people say, hey, you need to pay attention. There are kids here. We do not want you running over them. Put your phone down, slow down, 15 mile an hour speed limit, or you get a ticket. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wiseman. My last card is Stephanie Langergan. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Um, I'm Stephanie Landrigan. I'm a bicyclist, or I used to be until I broke my foot, but um, I'm also a, a participant in some of the public workshops that we had, and I really am excited that we are passing this tonight. I'm encouraging you to do it. It's the right thing to do. If, if the title doesn't sell you on it, um, if you're a bicyclist and you drive through L.A. and you drive through the city of Glendale, you know we need to have a better awareness, and this uh, piece of policy is going to put that in place. Thank you very much, and I encourage you to pass this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to see you walking again, by the way. <laughs> okay, I have no other cards. I'm going to close the public hearing and go to my colleagues for comments. I'm, I'm being mouthed by the city attorney. I want to make sure the record's clear. It's actually not a public hearing. I'm not closing any public hearing. Strike that from the record. Okay. Frank? No, go ahead. You go. No, you go first. Okay. Go. I know Mr. Quintero actually has to leave first. to go to an airport. Yeah, to go to I'm going a, to the, the airport. Burbank City Council uh, meeting. Okay. Um, well, it's a great evening in the city of Glendale. I am so happy that all of the hard work that these people that spoke at the uh, uh, podium put together, because in fact the staff has done a wonderful job, Colin has certainly done a wonderful job, but there's no question that there is a groundswell of support from people geographically different, ages, um, employment, uh, sport writers, you name it. So this is, I was very, very impressed uh, when I went to an advisory committee uh, meeting a couple of weeks ago and expected, I don't know what, maybe to find six people there or seven people there. In fact, it was packed. It was, and like I say, people from all over uh, Glendale. So I think the staff's done a great job. Colin, of course, Mark Sturdivan, and... Uh, and everyone else, Mr. Zern, Mr. Galanian, who's here, Captain Povolitis, they've all worked uh, together. But like I say, I think it's the just, quote, ordinary people here in uh, Glendale that have, uh, have really pushed this effort to a, uh, to a different level. And whatever I say, everyone at the podium pretty well hit it you know, right on the uh, head, whether they use bicycles to uh, commute to work or do sport riding, walking, the health issues, everything uh, uh, sort of was mentioned this evening. Um, I do want to talk about uh, my experience just a few weeks ago. I was fortunate enough to receive a fellowship for a transportation conference in the city of Seville, which is the major it's the capital of southern Spain, of Andalusia. It's a, not unlike Los Angeles in the sense that it's very spread out. I've been going to this city for many, many uh, years. And that city, in a four-year period, was transformed. The last time I was there, uh, it, it's a typical European city in the sense that you've got the inner city that dates back literally thousands of years with small streets and everything's tight and you've got the 18th century city with wide turnarounds and so forth the entire city and the entire area probably two and a half million 
traffic and more traffic, and I mean, it was just pretty bad, actually. That was five years ago. When I got the conference material, in that material they mentioned that uh, that city had gone from 6,000 bicycle trips a day to 60,000. And I read the material and I was very skeptical, let's put it that way. <laughs> I just thought, oh, what an exaggeration. Oh, there's no way. This couldn't possibly happen. Uh, I was absolutely wrong. I was absolutely wrong. The entire city has changed. They have, I believe, 250 different locations where with a uh, card, we were all issued uh, cards, with a little card you swipe into a uh, machine, into a computer, you put in your code, you identify bike number 9, bike number 20, uh, you pick up your bike. You're now free to ride all over Seville, downtown, the university campus, the river, whatever it is, and you can click it into another location. Or it comes with a built-in chain. This is actually a private company that the city of Seville has contracted with. Uh, bus service, when you come in from the suburbs, and like I said, it's very spread out, your um, uh, pass or your monthly pass, you can actually at the bus station go ahead and check out a bike and go to work and come back or shopping, whatever. I just hope that in this city of Glendale we do just one-fourth of what they've done at that particular big, big city. So it's not too unlike Los Angeles. There were people there from Copenhagen, there were people there from Amsterdam, there were people there from South America, from Asia, South Africa. This next conference will be held in Vancouver. American representatives from Chicago, from Dallas, Texas, from Los Angeles, San Francisco. This isn't anything new. We're not reinventing the wheel. This is something that is being done worldwide. And there's, their traffic issues in some of these cities are far greater than ours. The leadership in those cities and the public just had the wherewithal to decide they wanted to do something, and it paid off in spades. And incidentally, what was very impressive were the actual business people associated with these streets that had turned into pedestrian corridors and bicycle corridors. They weren't exactly on board, but over time they began to understand my business is increasing. People are stopping. They're parking a bike or they're walking. They're going into my establishment. So that the mayor of Seville actually said now they're competing. Now they're unhappy. If there's a bike lane and sort of a pedestrian lane on this street, the next street over is saying, how about us? Why can't you do the same with us? So I think working with our business people, working with our residents, I think we're on to a real winner here. I think we're going to do very, very well, and I'm sure the city council tonight is going to uh, pass this. It's only a first step. It's only the beginning. But we have to continue to pursue this, uh, this endeavor. It's worth it. I've ridden bikes. I bought my first 10-speed in 1972, and I've owned a bike ever since. But I notice here in Glendale I'm riding less and less. So I hope that uh, in the coming years I'll be riding more and more, and everyone else on the dais will be joining me. Eventually we'll all be racing together to... Uh, to get to the different <laughs> to the different places, I'm I'm very uh, supportive, and I want to thank all you, all of you tonight for uh, showing up. Thank you. Now, uh, if you can wait a few minutes before you go to oh, the no, Burbank. Okay, terrific, Mr. Manukin. Uh, yes, I, uh, I I'm basically supportive of the plan. Uh, I've uh, you know after three months of campaigning, approximately, I gave up all exercise, and the first thing I thought of. <laughs> after the campaign to start back on my rehabilitation and to uh, some sort of physical well-being, I picked up my bike and I asked my friend to drop me off in, uh, in west of La Crescenta. And I rode uh, Foothill all the way uh, to La Cañada and then got on Chevy Chase and started uh, biking. I thought I was, you know, coming down from the west to the east, it's kind of downhill. 
I had 18 gears that didn't do me any good. I had to stop a dozen times and catch my breath. But it was a it was a great beginning to uh, to get back into shape. And uh, I didn't think of running because every time I run, I injure myself. But I think uh, bicycling is uh, a type of exercise that uh, does not have the the pressure points, and uh, it's easier on your back, on your knees, and on your heels. So I think it's a great way. Uh, to uh, to get outdoors and and what I what I notice is when I ride a bike is that uh, you see more of the city uh, when you're out uh, looking around rather than driving. There's so much I see when I'm riding the bike as opposed to being in the car. Uh, the only thing I'm afraid of is uh, is uh, you know having uh, riding the bike on the streets with my children. I usually take them uh, somewhere where it's a dedicated bike lane go to Santa Monica or maybe by the beach where they have a specific uh, area where they can where they can bike or uh, or Griffith Park and uh, areas like that which are safer for children to ride in and I hope that uh, uh, starting with this plan we can have areas in, in within the city of Glendale where it's safe to have families uh, go out and ride together so I'm definitely supportive of, of it and I do believe that uh, I do have radical ideas about, uh, about uh, uh, I think we should forbid cars in the city of Glendale one day a week and everyone should take a bike, but uh, maybe, that's, maybe, maybe that's too progressive at this point. So uh, it, It's just I can't get back up Chevy Chase to go home. That's the problem. What a bike. Well, uh, I will be supporting, uh, will be supporting the, the measure. Thank you. Who's, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Uh, I think this is a great... Uh, I'm not sure this is the culmination of uh, Colin's efforts. This is a one step along the, the road. I see that this is still a draft. It says it's uh, the fourth version of the draft. I think it's great. It means we're continuing to work on it. Um, it's, you know, clearly the point is, um, aside from promoting uh, bicycling, I think the underlying efforts here are to get uh, our children and our adults out active, uh, reduce obesity, and they don't have to be only on a bike. They can also be uh, on, on foot, walking the neighborhoods. Uh, we've worked with uh, Jono and uh, Rubik and Steve Zern uh, to try and do some of the engineering to make it a much safer area. We've worked on crossings. Of course, we've had a string of pedestrian incidents over the last year or two. Uh, we want to make sure that no one is deterred from walking, that no one thinks that it's going to be it's safer to get in a car and to get from point A to point B uh, rather than just getting out and walking. Um, I haven't bought my bike yet. I know Colin gave us a, a little lesson on what to look for, the, uh, uh, not the crossover. What do you call it? There's the dual-purpose uh, hybrid. hybrid, the hybrid uh, bike. I haven't bought mine yet. But I have been doing a lot of walking. I think that's uh, also very healthy. Uh, places where I would previously jump, wouldn't think twice about jumping in my car and, and driving uh, a short distance to, I now just uh, get out and walk. It certainly is a much healthier lifestyle. And there are many other people out there that are doing this. And as you see others doing it, you feel encouraged yourself. Uh, you know, Susan saw the group of bicyclists, and that was encouraging to her. And and I think it's uh, very much uh, contagious. Uh, this Friday is a walk to school day for many of the elementary schools across the, uh, the city and the school district. Uh, and I'm happy to say I'll be walking with some kids. And uh, you know, as soon as we can get our kids out of the car, out of the mindset of if I want to go from here to the Americana, mom, can you drive me? Or mom, can you, uh, you know, take me in the car and go, it'll be better for everyone. It'll cut down on the emissions, it'll cut down on our dependence on oil, it'll cut down on obesity, uh, and kids will have a, uh, you know, be a part of the neighborhood. It, it integrates uh, kids, adults, seniors into the fabric of uh, Glendale. And I think it's, it's very good. This is uh, the way we're moving. It's, it's excellent. I'm very happy about it. And uh, many more steps along the way, our bikeway master plan and uh, back to our circulation element. 
Uh, and don't forget the hardscaping that uh, was done, the uh, Riverdale Maple uh, Bike Path. Is that the official name of it? It's the... Uh, Greenway. Uh, right, the Riverdale, Riverdale Maple Neighborhood Greenway. Uh, which is great. Maybe you know that'll be the template for more throughout the city. Uh, so I support it uh, wholeheartedly. Hey, Mr. Weaver. Well, over 60 years ago, I used to ride my Schwinn bike around here in Glendale. Um, it was a nice, quiet community then. Now we're a city of 200,000 people one of the densest urban cities in the United States of America. Our street system was designed for traffic flows in the 40s and the 50s. We have worked hard with the engineers on mobility plan, whatever, uh, to handle the traffic on the streets. Uh, most of the streets cannot be widened. And my professional career was always about trying to move the traffic, the cars, through the communities more efficiently. Southern California was built on cars getting around. With a county over 50 miles wide, people having to move had to be cars. Today in this city, we almost double the population of this city on a workday that much traffic in town. We have to deal with that. To think about we're going to redesign streets for the safety of bicycles when the roads were originally designed to handle cars, that's a tough go. And we all have seen the idiots that drive on our streets at 50, 60 miles an hour. And I'm just so scared. When the day's going to come, we're going to have some tremendous accidents of bicyclists legally on the street in the showers, driving area, and some reckless people driving with their cars and hitting them. No match. We already have enough trouble with pedestrians getting hit. We're one of the kings of the country in that. People don't care. You can have the greatest ideas on how to handle this. Engineers have a tough problem trying to slow traffic down and then try to accommodate bicycles and everything into it. Some cases you can. I told the story a few months ago in December when I was decorating the Rose Float. I happened to be in Northwest Glendale, and I drove to Two Freeway on Colorado East Side. Not one traffic line, and I could have driven a bicycle right in the middle of the street the entire length because it was six in the morning. You get the impacts when all the traffic hit, people going to work and coming, and as a professional engineer, I don't know how you, how you handle all that. Uh, I've gone through this, I put a lot of marks on, but I understand this is a uh, a reference document, per se, a lot of good stuff in it. Uh, a lot of it is related to money. The city is facing a $17 million shortfall that we're going to start studying how to remove. And if you want to talk about improvements and stuff, it's going to cost. Where are bicycles going to be in the priority of providing all the services that this city expects from us? I don't know. Uh, I, I'm just trying to be realistic about it. The dangers are out there, the funding problems that are out there. It's good to have. It's good to have this plan. I'm voting for it. I just want everybody to be realistic about it. You're not going to change this city from a car-driven community to a bicycle community. It's just never going to happen. We, we drive miles and miles to and from. That's when I was young, I remember my father would say, we're going to go out for an outing. We're going to go to Armstrong Nurseries. It was out in Van Nuys. It would take us two or three hours to drive out there on the roads into the valley and stuff. It was totally different. 
roads and roads were designed for those days. Today, my gosh, it's a totally different thing out there. We have buildings. How, how can you widen streets? How can you create lanes? It's bad enough when people park their cars and then just swing the door open. If you're on a bicyclist and you're coming, or even cars sometimes, it's so close. The tolerance you're working in and design of street lane widths and stuff, very complicated. But I've talked enough. I'll support it, but please be realistic on what you can expect to do with this when it's grouped into the general plan. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make my comments. Um, I'm sure some of you could guess what I'm going to say. And the reason you can guess is because you may have seen me. I was at at least three of the public meetings, um, participated in the bike counts and the Maple uh, Maple Riverdale Greenway project. And one anecdote about that, when we were planting the trees there, I remember a family walking by who was lived either on the block or in the vicinity, and they asked what we were doing out there planting trees. And someone explained the program to them, and they said, that's wonderful. It's going to be so great to have these trees and to have these bikes, and we want to help. And they just stopped what they were doing and spent the next hour and a half planting trees with the volunteers. So that's the kind of uh, enthusiasm that people on that block and in that neighborhood have towards what, what's being done there. Um, what do I think? I mean, M Mr. Weaver's comments are very interesting, and that's certainly a perspective, and he has the experience of, of many more years than I do. Um, but I'm just idealistic enough to believe that bikes are the future, and, and a pedestrian and bike-oriented lifestyle is the future, and it's also the solution. And he's absolutely right when he says that our streets were not engineered for the amount of traffic that's on them. And that's why this has to be a focus. Because we'll never catch up with the idea that every single person can only get around a city that's growing, whether we want it or not, to grow because of population growth by car only. We would, may have been built that way 50 years ago and 100 years ago. but. Like he said, the, the concept was never that every single person in the city would own an automobile. It wasn't built that way. The cities in Europe realized that maybe five years ago when their traffic problems, as, as Mr. Quintero said, got so bad that traffic was literally in many places at a standstill. Um, and they were just as entrenched as us in the car way of life and had designed their lives and their communities around automobiles the way that most of America has been designed. And as gas got more expensive, and it's even more expensive in Europe than it is here, and as more and more of their built environment was being sacrificed to make room for automobiles the way that we've done here, um, they realized that they couldn't sustain that kind of a lifestyle. And we pay a big price for it in this country, and not to get you know preachy or anything like that, but I can't help myself a little bit that you know we're involved in foreign wars, many of which are based on our need for oil. I read some amazing statistics about what even just a few car trips for each, a few bicycle trips for each person can do, if you only bike 20% of the time, the reduction overall in the demand for foreign oil is huge. Um, and it really becomes a solution for a lot of those problems, environmental problems, social problems, political problems. And it's not to say that everyone's going to ride a bike or that even people that do are going to do so all the time. We're not. I ride my bike a lot to City Hall. I walk a lot to City Hall. I don't do it every single day. Um, but if you at least make the streets safe enough that people have that choice, that's the goal. Give people the choice. If they want to ride their cars, you know, if you're one of those people that's riding your car every day and hate those bikes in front of you, just remember that that person in front of you on the bike is not going to compete against you for that parking space somewhere. Uh, they're not going to be in front of you when the light's changing so you get stuck in the next cycle of a red light. Um, you should encourage them to be out there because every car off the road reduces traffic congestion incredibly. Um, so it's really the solution for a city that will grow because even if we don't want it to grow, the population is growing for the entire region. And we cannot, I mean, literally, we just can't have the car being the only mode of transportation that people can, can use. It'll just become even bigger problems than we have now. And so this is something that we need to do. It's not something that's a luxury to us. It's something that's absolutely a necessity as we go forward in the city, as is the basic idea of this plan, which is to make the roads safer. And we all know that traffic safety is a huge problem in the city. It's a problem for when, you, when, you're, when you're in your car. It's a problem for people that are on the streets. We have an abysmal traffic safety record in Glendale. And you just cannot put a price on 
safety, and human lives. And so we have to find the money to implement a lot of this. It'll be hard, and I don't know where it's going to come from, but it has to be a focus as far as I'm concerned, because we have citizens that are literally being killed out there. Um, so to me, it is a priority. And all of it's a priority, but particularly in my mind, the engineering part of it's a priority, and the traffic calming, and putting in the amenities that will make people feel safe enough to be on the sidewalks and in the crosswalks and on their bicycles. Um, I want to thank the public for participating because this couldn't have happened without all of the volunteers and without people writing the emails and coming into meetings. All of that is extremely important. Um, I was taking a lot of notes. I just want to see if there's anything else. Oh, another statistic that I read that was really interesting was they've tracked the time at which children went from walking to school to being bused to school. And it's the exact moment at which childhood obesity became a huge problem in this country. And it's certainly not the only contributing factor, but it's definitely <coughs> a factor. And the, safe, the um, safe Routes to School program, which seeks to make it safer for children to walk and ride bikes to school, is not only important because some children you know, are going to walk because they have to walk, but also because the children who aren't walking are paying the price in terms of obesity and all of those related diseases. And as much as parents might be afraid of their children being hit by a car, if they understood the health ramifications, the very serious health ramifications of obesity in childhood, which is at huge rates, they'd realize that there's much more chance of their child dying at some much earlier point in their life than they would have otherwise, or suffering all of the health ramifications of type 2 diabetes and everything else that they're seeing now in children. Um, I know this is very preachy, isn't it? But this is, you know, it's my podium for at least five minutes. Um, so I do support this. I support it not only in terms of its concept or in terms of being a blueprint, but I support it in terms of implement implementation. And I will push for implementation of this as long as I am on this council, and even after I'm on this council. Because it's not enough to have these plans. We have to also find ways of making them become reality. So again, thank you to the public. And with that, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Quintero. Well, before, uh, I just want to clear up that this isn't just a European thing. We were shown what Chicago has done in terms of their uh, uh, bike. New York. Uh, New York. And one of the um, aldermen, there were a number of people from Chicago there, elected officials. And when I asked him, I had spent a winter in Chicago once, I, uh, I asked him, well, People ride their, just once, <laughs> people ride their bikes, uh, people ride their bikes in the winter, like kind of, he said, yeah, they don't sweat. So they actually, I guess, that's what he said. Other than a snowstorm, I didn't ask him then, but I mean, even in the winter, those people, some people commute to work on their bicycles. And in the Central Park, their large min Millennium Park, I think it's called, I saw it, um, I mean, they have all the bike facilities there. People can take showers and park their bikes, etc. That's one. Vancouver, another North American city, same thing. They're riding in the rain. And, and even Long Beach. On Friday night, I was in Long Beach, and I saw their, their new bike paths east-west through the center of the, of the downtown. If we build it, there is no question, in, and we will build it, and we'll build it soon, I hope, there is no question in my mind that people are going to use this. This Riverdale connection, just to start with, they're going to use this. And there are plenty of others along Kenneth, along Mountain. Hopefully we're going to have a north-south. There's no question that people are going to use and take, take the opportunity to either walk or ride their uh, bikes. I'm done with my preaching and ready to... Uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one. ...ready to move uh, 8A1. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Council members Manukin? Yes. Jarring? Yes. Harrow? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Friedman? Yes. Thank you. Next item, please. 8B is Director of Community, De Community Development regarding amendment to the Glendale Building and Safety Code 2011 relating to green building standards. That B1 is an ordinance for introduction. Thank you. Mr. Hagani. Yes, uh, the City Council might remember, except for Councilman Manukian, who was not part of the study session that we held last month, and if you might remember that Stuart Tom outlined several options for additional green building standards to be added to the Cal Green Building Code that is already in effect. And the Council, uh, based on the options that were provided, directed staff to go and uh, bring in an ordinance 
uh, and 12 items were selected, and I believe the, uh, the proposed ordinance covers all those 12 items. Stuart Tom is here to answer any questions you may have. Otherwise, uh, the or or this is, um, we recommend that you, you uh, amend uh, the ordinance with the 12 amendments. If you have any questions, again, uh, Mr. Tom is here to answer. Thank you. Mr. Manukian. Uh, I, uh, as I was reviewing this item, I see it's uh, the rest of the council has the benefit of uh, many uh, hearings on it, and I have not I have not had uh, the benefit of those uh, of those uh, of those hearings. Uh, therefore, I would uh, like to ask uh, to hold this item over, if it's possible, for a few weeks, if not a little longer, for me to get acquainted with the item and. Uh, to get more information on it so I can uh, make a determination on it. That would be appreciated. Mr. Weaver? I'd prefer not to. We've had so many study sessions on this in the public, on TV. We all agreed on these items. This is only an ordinance for introduction that gives one, two weeks, one week uh, for review, additional review, before we would adopt. So personally, I think we ought to go ahead Right, on something we've really studied a long time on. Is there a, um, do we need to move forward on this in a timely manner, or can we wait a couple of weeks? Or? It's, uh, it's up to the desire of the city council. We could do two weeks, Mr. Howard said. Madam Mayor, Mayor, members of the council, you can certainly introduce the normal process is to introduce and then adopt or consider adoption the next week. You could certainly introduce and hold the matter over for two or three weeks for adoption should you choose to do that. That's another allow, option. That allow Mr. Mr. Tom time to sit with Mr. Manukian and explain it. That's where I went to get to understand it thoroughly. I went through every one with him. It took an hour or two, but Mr. I was comfortable. Well, I think that's the point, that we as a council have had the benefit of many uh, hours of discussion on this, uh, questioning and discussion amongst ourselves. I, I want to make sure that Mr. Manukian, uh, as the new uh, council member, has the benefit uh, of all the information that we have uh, and perhaps also into another, enter into another discussion on it. I certainly had some points uh, that were uh, not received by my other colleagues, and perhaps I would have an opportunity once he has the uh, information um, to hear my points in person and perhaps uh, encourage him to uh, not move so quickly on these items uh, and see how the cow green comes in. The point is not to advocate today, but to give him the time that he feels he needs to uh, go through this. These are going to have um, serious and long-term effects on the city of Glendale I would like to make sure as a private resident that all the decision makers have enough information before them to uh, vote uh, accordingly and to vote uh, intelligently and uh, as well-informed uh, representatives of the city. Well, I do have a member of the public who wishes to speak. So before we make the decision about whether we're going to introduce the ordinance or how we're going to proceed, um, I'll call up Stephanie Langrigan. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Uh, I, w I regret I was not able to be at your last session. That was when I broke my foot. I had uh, planned on being here, but I wasn't going anywhere. And uh, at that time, I uh, did listen to your proceedings afterwards. The biggest issue that I think was addressed, and I think it's very important, is the Tier 1 changes that you did um, come to some conclusions on the 12 of them are not infrastructure changes. They are uh, surface changes that make a huge difference monetarily and in the long run. And uh, I hope Mr. Manukian, welcome, that you have a chance to uh, watch some of those hearings and to uh, listen to that um, testimony at the time. And I hope that when that happens that I encourage you to uh, accept the ordinance as it's presented, and thank you very much. My suggestion, thank you, Ms. Langergan. My suggestion to my colleagues is that we take the opportunity to introduce the ordinance, and we do get to vote on it, so we can see if it um, is this, no, there's no, there's no vote. Okay, I do think we should introduce the ordinance, but hold it over for two weeks, which I think would Please. be plenty of time um, for Mr. Manukian to sit down with 
with staff and um, to be lobbied by Mr. Nigerian. Uh, <laughs> is everyone here in two weeks? Uh, or at least the next time we have a full council. Let's make sure of that. Sure we're on. We is is this people. a land use issue? No. No. It's a, it's a uh, three vote. Not for. Not okay, is that agreeable to my colleagues? Okay. Yes. Then would someone like to introduce yeah, the motion? I'll, I'll introduce the ordinance. It'd be one. I hope with, Mr. Manukian will sit down with. With the ordinance to return. The next time, would it? I think sometime again, after I think two weeks that we have May a full council. May have a full council on the third, which would be two weeks. Two weeks. Two okay. weeks. So May third, return May third. Okay. Thank you. What's next? At eight C is fire chief regarding providing contract fire and EMS dispatching services to the city of Alhambra. C one is a resolution authorizing city manager to execute the Verdugo Fire Communication Service Agreement with the city of Alhambra. Thank you. Welcome, Chief Scoggins. Good evening, Mayor Friedman and members of the council. Um, this is renewing a, of an existing agreement that we have with the city of Alhambra for fire and EMS dispatching through Verdugo Dispatch. Um, there's a couple of key changes in the agreement and, and one we've been working on for a while. A couple of years ago we did a cost allocation plan for Verdugo Dispatch Center and figured out um, a rate per dispatch and we are working with all the contract agencies right now to bring all of the agencies up to this rate. So that's one of the most significant changes in the contract with Alhambra. Um, it's a 6% rate and that's an increase from a 5% rate. And also um, in the past we had a 10% administrative fee as a part of the agreement, but since we've done the cost allocation um, for the dispatch services now, we actually know what the rate is, and it's all actually rolled into the rate. Okay, any questions? Yes, Mr. Minukian. And uh, the dollar amounts, these are monies that we'll be receiving to cover the costs of uh, the operations, the 266000 for fiscal year 2011, 278012 uh, for 2012, and 290. 5,000 for two, 2013, those, the first one is fixed, the others are not fixed. Uh, how, how does that work? They're, they're approximate costs because the cost is based on the number of dispatches to the city of Alhambra. So if they have a higher the cost, year, the cost to them, not to us. To them. Okay. Right. So if there's a high number of dispatches, it would be higher. If it's a lower number, it would be lower. But the first year is fixed? Is, that's what first it says. First year for 11, 12. For incident yes. NA. Yes. So the first year is fixed. Those rates are set. Okay. All right. So, and uh, we do have currently a contract with the city of Alhambra, and we're basically renewing it at this point with some some of the amendments you, that you mentioned. Our contract expired November first, two thousand ten, with the city of Alhambra. We started um, negotiations with Alhambra back in August. Okay, and we just now concluded the the agreement. Yes. Any they particular actually, reason why it took so long? Alhambra City Council passed the agreement um, February 14th, Valentine's Day. It was difficult for the city of Alhambra because we were asking for a rate increase of 1% from 5 to 6%, so it was very difficult. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Starbird. Uh, I, I'd like to add that um, a little over a year ago that the three, I'll call them the charter cities in Verdugo, Burbank, Glendale, Pasadena, retained a consultant to do a complete cost analysis of Verdugo. Uh, as a result, Glendale, uh, now through the rates and the renewal of these contracts, is capturing all of its costs, indirect and direct. As a result, we actually came out quite a bit ahead. Yes. Uh, is a reduction in our actual cost in the program. And uh, all of the three charter cities completely agreed in, in, the, uh, in the cost allocation and the study. And uh, in fact, it was being encouraged by our, our uh, neighbor to the, uh, to the west here. The result of that was many of our uh, more indirect overhead costs that really hadn't been part of the original rate setting were all rolled in, uh, and as a result, we're recapturing a lot of the costs we weren't previously recapturing, and these rates are reflective of those increased costs. Can I uh, get a copy of that study sure. and, uh, sure. and the analysis and, uh, and the results of, uh, of the analysis and what actions the mm -hmm. council and staff took to remedy that situation? Yes. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, thank you. Move 8C1. Second. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Council members Manukian? Yes. Jarian? Yes. Montero? 
Weaver. All right. Mayor Friedman. Yes. Next item, please. KT is Director of Public Works regarding Central Avenue Traffic Signal Modification and Fiber Optic Communication System Installation Project. E1 is motion authorizing the City Manager to execute a professional services agreement with KOA Corporation for design and construction support services. Thank you. Madam Mayor, members of Council, this item is to award the professional services agreement for design and construction of six traffic signals on Central Avenue between Colorado and Sanchez. If you have any specific questions, Rubik Galani and City Engineers here, as well as John O'Bagdani and our Traffic and Transportation Administrator. <coughs> are there any questions on this item? Mr. Yes, Mr. Manoukian. Um, Which staffer would you like to <laughs> does, It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, I, was, I was driving down Central uh, the other day, and Central looks terrible compared to the other streets. Uh, it's a shame that we have uh, delayed the maintenance and uh, renovation of Central this long and uh, the part south of the freeway all the way to Colorado and to Broadway it's in terrible shape so uh, I understand and in terms of pr the professional services it's fine but I would like to get uh, a plan of action for renovating Central Boulevard because uh, I don't know how long we can go on with a, with a street like that. It looks worse than Los Angeles. It's, it's in your upcoming CIP. Okay. Uh, when, when do you, okay, we'll discuss it during, during the budget meetings, I guess? Actually, it's, it's in the upcoming year through okay. with, the re, with the utilization of redevelopment bond funding. Okay. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you an update on the, on the time frame. In terms of the pro professional services agreement, was there a, was there a request for proposals, or, or did we go out for uh, bids for this project? Council Member Manukian, members of the City Council, yes. We sent an RFP request for proposal for uh, eight consultants, and we received three responses, and we interviewed all three. And uh, do we have, uh, do we know when they're going to start and when they're going to finish when, uh, once this is uh, approved? Uh, once Council uh, uh, approves the award, we'll give them a notice to proceed, and they need to start within two weeks. Within two weeks, and when will they complete? Do they have a timeline to complete the project? They will be given two to two and a half months to complete the project. And I know it's a small project compared to the things that we do in the city, uh, but uh, is there any sort of uh, controls in terms of controlling the costs or additional costs? Uh, is there a contingency? Council Member Manukin, the contract that we will enter into with the consultant will be um, maximum cost and no increase. So it's a negotiated uh, fee and there will not be an increase. And regardless of the size of the project, we apply the same controls over the consultant's work. And what, the, what is the issue with the fiber, fiber optic communication system installation? What is, what is that? These are the conduits that we install uh, once we remove the, the concrete uh, for upgrade of fiber optics. And that are we installing them for a purpose? Is, uh, or is I'm it just refer, standard? I'm going to refer to Mr. Bagdanian who yeah. has... Uh, um, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, Councilman Manukian, the existing cable that we have for communication that ties the signals to our traffic operations center is a twisted pair of cables, the old cable that we installed 15, 20 years ago. All right, thank you. And so that's okay. the we, we should note this is part of the Central Avenue Rehabilitation Project. Okay. Thank you. So, so following this will be the street reconstruction. And hopefully we're going to, whatever improvements, whatever improvements we're going to do underneath Right. We, we, we do it before we... Public Works fix. make sure those are okay. all done in advance, including any private utilities. They're all notified right. to do any work right. now because there'll be a stop from doing that for, is it five years, seven years after the work? Okay. Thank you. Actually, if I may, uh, one addition. The plans that the consultant's going to prepare is going to be wrapped up and incorporated into the Central Avenue project. So okay. construction Thank will be done simultaneously. I'll move the item if there are no questions. Second. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Second. Okay. There, there was already a second by Council Member Weaver. I didn't hear him. I, I didn't hear him. I'm sorry. Sorry. I didn't speak loud well enough. We have a second and a backup second. Mm -hmm. Can we have a roll call, please? Mm -hmm. Council Members Mnookin. 
Yes. Brian. Yes. Carol. Weaver. Aye. Mayor Friedman. Yes. Next item, please. Mayor Friedman, we now return to oral communications, the five-minute portion where discussion is limited to items not part of the agenda. Each speaker is allowed. As stated, five minutes. Council may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. And the city manager may refer the matter to the appropriate department for an investigation and a report. Thank you. My first card is Hazel Catmull, followed by Anaheed Pendrera. Good evening, Mayor, City Councilors. My name is Hazel Catmull. Prior to the recent elections, there were many speakers who complained loudly and vehemently, objecting to the coverage given to their candidate by the news press. On t last Tuesday, a speaker, after accusing the news press of yellow journalism and deliberate distortion of facts, etc., petitioned the council to issue a proclamation telling the news press what was expected of their newspaper. He wisely refrained from using the word censor. It is within, it is in within memory of a newspaper who was deliberately given false information, which they printed and retracted. They were taken to task by their competitors. They were ordered to stop publishing the articles. The reporters were threatened. With trepidation, they published, and we had Watergate. There are many people now living in Glendale who left their countries due to the suppression of free speech and press. I'm not inferring that the news press is the bastion of lit literacy. They will continue to publish and retract as they see fit. The speaker vastly, thank you. The, the speaker vastly underrated the people the intelligence of their readers. We all have choices. Now this contentious election is over, where accusations were made and hurtful things were said, hopefully there will be a less complacent council, one who will listen and use the suggestions of the public regarding the budget, pensions, etc., and not allow personal dislikes to colour their statements. You are elected. You are our elected officials. People voted for you and believe in you. Whether you like it or not, you are held to a higher standard. You represent all the people of Glendale. As you've seen in many elections, the very people who voted for you are the same people who take you out. Please do not underestimate the people. They read, they listen, and they watch. And Mr. Nigerian, thank you so much for last year. And welcome back to the rest of you. And Mr. Weaver, it looks good in that seat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anaheed Panjarian. Nejian. Okay. My last name is a little bit long pronunciation. It I'm sorry. It's, it's got Doesn't magic matter. marker. Armenian last name always is difficult for pronunciation. Thank you. Not as difficult as my husband's French I, names. Yes. P-I-N-E-D-J-I-A-N. Okay. It's, anyway. it's covered in magic marker on here. I'm sorry. Okay. Good evening, Honorable Mayor Friedman and members of the City Council. I am Anahit Pinijan, resident Glendale. It is a wonderful opportunity to see a new appointed mayor, Laura Friedman, here. I would like, I would like to congratulate also re-elected members of the Glendale City Council, Mr. Dave Weaver and also Rafi Mnookin. I was watching last Sunday Mr. Manoogian's program on U.S. Armenian TV. I heard countless words of appreciation from Glenda residents. They were confident with your past eight years' experience as councilman and two years as mayor of this city. You work hard on the issues related to concern of the city's residents. You have been proven yourself to be a great asset on the city council, and the city needs you. You are the right man of integrity and ability and effective advocate of our community. I wish each of you a success in your highly responsible service. I also support this plan, which is today discussed about safe and healthy street. It's helped reduce the pollution also, and nobody mentioned about that. Thank you. 
Thank, Thank you very much. much. Harry Zabo is followed by George Zaluzzi. Council, my name is Harry Zavos. I'm a resident of Glendale. Uh, it's been about a year when I first came before this council to question the constitutionality under Proposition 218, the constitutionality of charter authorized transfers of water fees from the Glendale Water and Power to the general fund. In part, due to that effort, the city produced a report which, among other things, addressed the constitutionality of these transfers. And the council, as a result, voted to discontinue such future transfers. But that report also indicated an alternate way in which water fees could be transferred to the general fund legally. And that was to identify if there were areas where the general fund expended resources on behalf of the water works for which the general fund was not compensated. If that were the case, then water fees could be transferred to the general fund as a reimbursement. And I agree that would be legal. Based on that report, the council by resolution directed the staff to explore all possible areas where such reimbursement could take place and water fees could be justifiably and legally transferred from GWP to the general fund. Following that resolution, on more than one occasion I appeared before this council and indicated four confirmed areas in which GWP expended resources on behalf of the general fund for which it was not compensated. And I asked this council whether it would direct the staff as it did in its resolution directing them to study very carefully all the possible areas in which unreimbursed resources were given by the general fund to Glendale Water and Power that they would also with equal diligence examine and make part of their report unreimbursed resources expended by the general fund uh, uh, expended by GWP on behalf of the general fund including the four that I identified and Mr. Steiger confirmed were resources expended without compensation. I asked that question and what I received was silence. What I asked for was totally ignored. Now, I happen to think that was a serious question. I think it was cogently developed and respectfully asked. And I believe that I deserve better. And what's more, I think the ratepayers out there deserve better. I think I deserve and they deserved an answer, an answer that was not forthcoming on any occasion where I raised that question, where it was as if the question hadn't been raised at all. So tonight I raise that same question with this council in the hopes that instead of ignoring me and pretending the question hasn't been answer, asked, that you will supply an answer. Yes, if the general fund expends resources for which it is not compensated on behalf of the waterworks, then legally the waterworks can transfer water fees to the general fund in order to reimburse the general fund. But I ask the question that you also go in the opposite direction out of simple fairness. Fairness that is captured in that old saying, what's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. So if you're going to do that, you have to equally look with equal diligence at resources expended by Glendale Water and Power on behalf of the general fund for which the general fund has not been reimbursed. 
will you give me an answer? Will you give the public out there an answer? Or will you continue to carry on as if the question hasn't even been asked? Uh, I have another issue with regard to the actual uh, examples in the Wyndham report about uh, unreimbursed expenditures uh, on the part of the uh, general fund, but I will raise those next time. Thank you. George Luzzi, followed by Randy, Randy Hepner. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members. Thank you for your time. My name is George Aluzzi, and uh, I'd like to talk to you today about the buffer zone between Brand Park and Mountain Street, where I'm proud to live. Um, recently, three neighbors uh, down, there was a, a break-in where the perpetrators used that buffer zone as kind of a nice entryway into the backyard where they could do their work undetected and... Anyway, it was a bad situation, which could have been worse. Thankfully, no one was injured. But um, my concern is that this space is kind of open and easily accessible 24 hours a day. Uh, sometimes in the evening, my wife and I are in our backyard, and we can hear footsteps, people trouncing through leaves and such back there, and, you know, you get a little nervous. So I was wondering if there's anything that, that can be done, be it block off that area somehow, um, uh, signs, you know, serious, no trespassing, uh, uh, building of a tall chain link fence of some kind perhaps, uh, something to uh, isolate the homes from uh, this area that, uh, you know, I, I take a look back there and I can see beer cans and plastic bags. I don't know if people are, you know, there's like a good 15 foot space or so between my back fence and the beginning of Brand Park. So I just wanted to uh, voice my concern before yet another robbery happens um, and uh, just make you aware that, you know, the neighborhood's a little bit nervous. Thank you for your time. I have a question. Are there lights back there? There are no lights there back no there, lights. no. Thank you. It's very dark. That would be great. Lights, the surveillance camera or something would be awesome. I didn't say camera. I said lights. <laughs> okay. There are no lights back there now. Thank you, sir. Randy Hepner, oh. followed by... Oh. Yes. No, I am speaking on behalf of Randy Hepner as well. He was not able to attend, but I have a statement here that if you would allow me to read. We actually are... It's been our practice not to allow people to speak twice, but if you want to give that to us, we can put it into the public record and we'll all take a look at Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Rubik Govanesian, and that's my last card. If there's anybody else who wants to speak, please turn a card in now. Good evening, Madam Mayor, mem honorable members of the council, staff. My name is Rubik Ovanesian. I've lived on Grandview at the corner of Grandview West Mountain. I'm the neighbor that uh, Mr. George Zuli was referring to our house. Uh, we had a home burglary on March 25th, Friday morning, 10 a.m. As uh, we left our house about 8 15 to 8.45, uh, my daughter, my wife, and I. Uh, my wife returned about 10.25, and uh, as she uh, gates open, she parked the car, walked in. She noticed some things were wrong. She went upstairs and realized the entire bedroom was, uh, uh, everything was overthrown. Things were messed up. She suddenly uh, you know, realized that we had a burglary, ran out, called me. I literally was about three, four minutes away. I rushed back and realized that, yes, we did have a burglary. They came in through the back, and it's very shocking being the corner house, completely visible from my, uh, every direction. Uh, but, uh, you know, police came. They did an excellent job. Forensic units came. Uh, unfortunately, you know, some cash and jewelry, you know, close to about $50,000 uh, we lost. Um, the good thing is, as my wife apparently walked in, they ran out, they left one suitcase uh, by the pool area, and uh, at least they used two or three of our suitcases to haul away some of the stuff. Uh, I've served on the police advisory committee. Apparently this is becoming an epidemic. Quite uh, often it happens, although Glendale has a very low crime rate, and the crime has dropped, but um, I guess it's a social problem. Giving a little bit of history about the park, this is a unique park. It's in literally backs to the mountain and two sides are the residences. On the east side, there's about six or seven, eight residences. There's a buffer area that is open. 
As I've discussed it with uh, Parks and Rec uh, and the park manager, Chris Peplow, and the prior directors, who have been extremely helpful. They've done a tremendous job improving the uh, quality of issues in the park. This area has left, been left open. I've repeatedly discussed it with them, and uh, it would be nice that if they could kind of address this, uh, that buffer area. Although it's literally a 15 foot, there's uh, between the private residences back wall and the park supposedly historic wall. This area is open. It needs to have a chain link fence, tarp, surveillance cameras maybe at the gate, uh, kind of noting. Just a history on the park, about uh, 10, 12 years ago there was a stabbing, three years ago there was a shooting. It's a social problem, you know, and uh, if we can secure this section, but also on the west side there's about a dozen residences there. Honest to God, if I wanted to rob them, this is the best way, to go in the park, go in there, quietly jump the wall into their property when they leave, break into the house, rob them, and literally take their car and walk out the front door. It's very easy to do, not that it's happened to me. Uh, so I would appreciate, I've had a conversation with just Doran, uh, you know, brought it to his attention, he said he'll talk. And uh, I understand we have a major funding to address some of the repairs at the Brand Library, Brand uh, Auditorium, but if some additional funding can be addressed, cameras would be excellent as a two, both main entrances, or closing, or some bar, you know, chain link fence or something to buffer it. I mean, the, the thieves literally jumped at about a nine foot wall and then climbed back. So um, I would appreciate if something can be done so this doesn't happen. Usually, uh, you know, they take away a lot of goodies, they come back to the area. Thank you. Thank you. That's my last card. Are there any comments? Mr. Manukian? Yes. Uh, in regards to the issue brought up by, by Mr. Zavos, I would like a report in terms of uh, during the budget hearings in terms of uh, what items are being uh, considered as uh, expenditures on behalf of uh, the water fund that will be transferred to the general fund as well as uh, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't see the hearing that Mr. Zavos was mentioning. I would like to have uh, the issue of the four items that he brought up uh, in the report as well and uh, whether they would be considered or not. Uh, and as far as the safety issue for uh, this gentleman's house, uh, just for disclosure purposes, I know Mr. Ovanesian has been a long time uh, activist in the community. The other gentleman I just met tonight on the podium. But uh, it seems uh, there is a safety issue in that area. Uh, at a minimum, I think we should uh, be able to put some lights up there. Uh, if not, maybe a couple of signs. I know uh, we're in a budget crisis uh, times in terms of the economy and our budget, but uh, I think those are minimal, uh, minimal expenditures that we can uh, expend to uh, make that area a little safer. So. I mean, let me, uh, apparently, at least based on Mr. Ovenesian's comments, uh, Jess Duran's aware of the situation. We'll get an assessment from the staff. I note it appears to be the area between the maintenance access road and the back of the properties, that whole wooded area between the, the roadway and the back of the properties. Yeah, okay. We'll have him take a look at it and get you a full report. Thank you very much. Senator We should get a full report. I'm not sure what lights would do as as this robbery occurred, apparently in broad daylight. Um, but perhaps uh, we can get a report and get some security issues uh, nailed down with that. Um, as far as Mr. Zavos's concerns, I don't recall exactly what he was uh, requesting. I know he wanted to be involved in the... Uh, I guess in the actual work at the working level of how the uh, costs were being uh, allocated, uh, I am I'm opposed to that. I think uh, we don't need members of the community involved in uh, the actual preliminary work uh, being done by our departments. Once it's completed and once council has a chance to review it, I have no problem with receiving comments. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what he was asking for or not, but. Um, we, I would like to see things first before members of the public get to uh, give their input uh, and have a discussion. Mr. Starberg? 
Uh, unless Mr. Steiger is aware of the cost issues you raised, I would appreciate it if you send me an email with the specific costs. You have questions about Mr. Zavos, if you wouldn't mind. I, I, I wasn't raising the question of costs. I was simply uh, confer uh, I went to GWP. I raised these four issues where uh, the GWP was expending its like resources I mean. the without cost being you, the cost you believe GWP is incurring uh, would be general fund costs. If you could just note for right, and Mr. and Mr. Steiger confirmed them. I can tick them off right now. One was the. Uh, I, think, I don't uh, think we should get into a discussion about that. It's easier to get emailed. Yeah. So I don't want. Don't want I don't want to get into a discussion about. No, I'm just going. But rather than you reciting it now, if you could put those four issues four. Um, uh, costs into an email and send it, or right after the I, meeting, give you know, it to I, I, I would be glad right after the uh, meeting to uh, give you those four. That's I gave them twice before this council when I came and made the same request that if you're going to look at unreimbursed costs. I understand, I, Mr. Zavos. After the meeting, you can give those costs to Mr. Starbird. Thank you. Well, I just want to clarify for Mr. Njarian that I was I not asking the question. He said I was asking. And uh, if you don't want me to ask a question, I won't. It takes one minute. I can clarify it. If Mr. Njarian has a question, I'd allow him to ask it, but not for you to ask him a question at this point. No, I have no questions, Mr. Sell. Right. Okay, I would second... Mr. Manukian's request to um, have a conversation about Mr. Zavos's uh, concerns about those costs, as I understand, uh, costs that are being incurred um, to the general fund by GWP. So we can bring that back at some point. Okay. Other comments? With that, I would like us to adjourn in the memory of Carolyn Stetler. So moved. Okay, we are adjourned.